How can the sound stage be wider than the speaker's width? This is a great question, and it comes to us from Breen in Toledo, Ohio. And Breen writes, after setting up a pretty decent system, I've finally been able to hear wider sound stages. Good job, man. I understand that an image is created by the combination of the stereo pair in between the speakers, but what I can't wrap my head around is how an image can be created to the left of the left speaker. Right? How is it possible? I was hoping you could shed some light on this. And by the way, I've learned a lot from you so far. Thanks. Well, <laughs> thanks, Breen. I, I hope to continue in that tradition. All right. It is confusing. A couple of things let's get as a baseline. <clears throat> These are Gus's uh, mastering speakers, and they're, they're really great. They're, they're pretty much one of a kind. You've probably seen, these are Sony's, and you've probably seen something similar to these, but these particular ones were built by the designer of the speaker for Gus, and uh, they extend out to like 30, 40,000 cycles, way above human hearing. Really, really nice speakers. This little tweeter on top. Anyway, one thing about speakers is, and this is a little hard to wrap your head around, but the sound comes out, so let's, this is the right speaker and that's the left speaker, let's just say. It's actually the center, but that's okay. The sound is not trapped between the speakers, because right, we know that when this speaker plays an equal signal to that speaker, we create what's known as a phantom center channel. And that happens when both ears hear exactly the same signal. So if I stand over here and I'm listening to these two speakers and I hear the exact same thing, my brain says, oh, well that must be in the middle, right? Because when somebody's standing right in front of you and they speak, you get the exact amplitude and timing information arriving at both ears at the same time therefore they must be standing here. Now if that person moves off base a little bit, well then let's say they move over here and my left ear will hear just a little bit louder sound because the person has moved over and sound is kind of directional and the, the signal, the, the, the voice of the person will hit this ear first, there's an acoustic shadow of my face and then here second. So that's how, and when you move way over to the left, that's how we know that sound arriving first here in the left ear and louder is how we determine the whereabouts of the sound source. But the other point I wanted to make, speakers and me, we radiate out to the edges, right? It's, it's like, just picture a big ball. Maybe that's, you know, it's a wave, but it just, just picture a big ball. And it goes out to the sides, and it goes out to here. Now, you kind of understand if, if only the left speaker is playing, right, and I'm standing in front of that, well, then the sound <clears throat> will come only from that left speaker, and I'll hear it from that left speaker, and it'll hit my ear first. There's nothing coming from the right. <clears throat> so, boy. Um, so, that's how we hear the left channel. But how does it go beyond that speaker? Ah, okay. The way it goes beyond that speaker is, it's kind of a, a bit of a trick that has to do with arrival and phase, okay? So, <clears throat> if it's only coming from here, we can kind of localize that part. If it were in reality to come way over here to the side, right, where we don't have a source, we don't have a speaker, but how does it get way over to that side? Well, imagine if something really was way over to the side, what would happen? You would, your ear would pick up some of that room, but more importantly, the delay would be even longer because we're subliminally measuring the distance. So the sound hitting here gets delayed longer and something else interesting happens. Less and less is hitting my right ear. So as I stand here and listen, my left ear gets 
the impression, okay, it's getting it, but my right ear continues to hear it. It's not, I mean, my head isn't, what is it, 10 inches or something? So both my, both my ears hear this. What would happen if it's very far away? Well, if it's really far away and off to the side, my right ear is going to hear less and less of the sound, which doesn't happen when the speakers are just here. Both ears are hearing it. I'm only measuring the delay of hitting here to here. So if we then trick our ear by putting some left channel information out of phase so it cancels, from the right speaker, this ear will hear less and it sounds like it's moving way off to the side, farther away from here because my right ear isn't hearing as much because it's getting canceled. And we can do that in the mastering system by some tricky stuff and moving it back and forth. But anyway, long-winded explanation, that's how we tell uh, when something's outside the width of, of, the, of the speaker. When you make a recording, if you distantly mic it a little bit, you naturally get some of that, which is how most recordings get that wide sound stage. Because they're not close mic, they're distantly mic'd a little bit. And the farther away you are from the mics, the more spacious the sound field, the greater the depth, the greater the width, all that kind of good stuff. OK, uh, a, a great question. Thanks for asking it. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye.